This is the latest addition to OnePlus' popular line of budget-oriented smartphones. The Nord series has always been known for offering great value for money, and the Nord CE3 Lite is no exception. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you want to know about OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite. We'll check how it goes in terms of performance, battery life, camera, gaming and software. We even journeyed to Ibiza to check out the photo capabilities of the phone to find out if the Nord CE3 Lite will be a good companion to take on your holidays. But before we dive in, let's check out the contents of the box. The phone comes in pretty basic packaging. Inside we got the dedicated clear case for my phone. A quick start guide and a safety certificate and a SIM card ejector. And there it is, my new phone. At the bottom of the box there's also a 67 watt Super Vooch fast charger and a typical for OnePlus red USB charging cable. CE3 Lite is a pretty sweet and solid looking phone, but its body is made out of plastic. I know what you're thinking, plastic, gross. But hear me out. Plastic is actually much more durable than glass. It's less likely to shatter if you drop it and it doesn't show scratches. Plus, it's smooth and sturdy and it doesn't feel cheap or flimsy. I'm sure plastic is not a deal breaker for most people, considering how durable it is. So on the front, we got a 6.72 inch IPS display with a cutout in the top center for the 16 megapixel selfie camera. It also works as face unlock, which is pretty sweet. The bezels are a bit thicker at the bottom, but they are not too bad. Along the sides, we've got a power button on the right that doubles as a fingerprint sensor. It's not as convenient as a display based sensor, but it gets the job done. On the left side of the phone, we've got a dual SIM tray and the volume buttons. Up top, we've got a microphone and a barely visible slim grille for the earpiece. The earpiece also acts as one of the phone's loudspeakers. Down at the bottom, we've got another microphone, the other loudspeaker, a 3.5mm headphone jack and a USB-C port. At the back we've got a triple camera system, but it really only has one usable camera. We'll test and discuss that more later in this video. Build quality on the phone is solid for the price. It's not the fanciest phone out there, but it's sturdy and well made. The phone comes in two colours, pastel lime and chromatic grey. I'm holding the lime model and I think it looks pretty great. It's a bit of a different look than most phones on the market and I dig it. The lime colour is a nice touch and it's definitely gonna turn some heads. The display on the phone is pretty solid. It's a 6.72 inch IPS LCD with a full HD plus resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate, which means it can display smooth, fluid motion which is great for gaming or watching videos. It's also bright, getting over 500 nits, so it's easy to see in the direct sunlight. LCDs are not as good as AMOLED displays, that means the blacks might not be as deep and the contrast might not be as high. I was really hoping for an AMOLED display on this phone when I bought it. It would have made it one of the best mid-range phones on the market, but OnePlus decided to keep manufacturing costs down, so we're stuck with an LCD display. It's worth mentioning that the phone has a Widevine L1 certificate, so you can stream high-res HD and Ultra HD content from Netflix and Google Play. But the display doesn't support HDR, which is probably for the best, since HDR on LCD panels is usually mediocre. Overall, the CE3 Lite has a mixed bag of display features. It's bright enough and has good viewing angles, but the color accuracy is subpar and the dynamic refresh rate is aggressive and inconsistent. However, it's still a pretty decent display for the price, considering the 120Hz refresh rate. In this price range, it's pretty hard to beat. The sound of this phone is loud and clear. It even has an ultra volume mode that lets you crank it up past 100% all the way to 200%. But be careful because at that level the sound can get annoyingly loud and distorted. 
Right, I'm hyped to put this camera through its paces and see how it performs. And before we carry on, make sure you're subscribed. The phone has a triple camera system on the back, but the main 108 megapixel shooter is the only one worth using. The 2 megapixel depth sensor and the 2 megapixel macro camera are pretty much useless, and the lack of an ultra wide camera is a huge disappointment. The main camera takes decent photos in the daylight. The level of detail is good, but the images are a bit over sharpened. The colors are also good, and the dynamic range is decent with the HDR enabled. But the images look more natural with the HDR disabled. In low light, the sensor struggles a bit. Shadow regions in even well lit images can have noise and noise reduction artifacts. The 3 times lossless zoom feature is interesting. It looks pretty good in terms of detail and production. But as a photographer, I can honestly say that calling the 3 times digital zoom lossless is a bit misleading. It's really just cropping into the full 108 megapixels picture, but it's still not too bad for a digital zoom. Phones with true lossless zoom have optical zoom, like for example Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra with its two telephoto lenses, or Xiaomi 13 with which I'll show you in our next video. Those phones have loseless zoom, but the Nord CE3 Lite definitely does not. It's a bit misleading, but it's still a very capable camera for the price. Here we have three different phones taking the same photo, the CE3 Lite and the Xiaomi 12T, both mid-rangers with the same 108 megapixel sensor. All these photos look great, but when you zoom in, you can see the tiny details start to bleed into each other. However, the OnePlus doesn't lag far behind. It's still a great camera, especially for the price. The macro camera is as bad as you would expect. Images are dark, noisy and have poor colors. The fixed focus is difficult to use and the wide nature of the lens means you have to get really close to the subject. Video performance on the CE3 Lite is pretty forgettable. You're limited to a maximum of 1080 pixels at 30 frames per second. And there's no optical image stabilization. The digital stabilization does its best, but it's not great and it adds artifacts. For comparison, the digital stabilization on the CE3 Lite doesn't look as good as the optical stabilization on the new Xiaomi 13. It also adds visible artifacts every now and then. The level of detail is mediocre and the dynamic range is subpar. The colors are the only good thing about the image quality, but even those get worse when the light levels go down. As you can see, this is a low light footage recorded simultaneously with the 2023 OnePlus and the 2019 iPhone 11, which also has optical stabilization on board. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The 16 megapixel front facing camera takes adequate selfie shots, but in some lighting conditions they can be a bit washed out. Portrait selfies produce that artificial creamy bouquet, which is nice. And there are a few effects that you can apply to your selfies like desaturating the background and coloring the main subject. It looks really good. The phone runs on Oxygen OS 13.1, which is basically a rebatched version of Oppo's Color OS 13. It's a pretty customizable user interface with support for custom fonts, icons, colors, and themes. It looks really nice with a mix of stock Android and Apple's iOS elements. It has split screen, floating windows, a smart sidebar, customizable widgets, etc. It works great and it's definitely functional and customizable. One feature missing is an always on display, which is a shame, but otherwise the software is pretty solid. The phone runs on Snapdragon 695 chipset, which is decent and fast enough for most everyday tasks and casual gaming. However, you might occasionally feel some slowdowns and hitches if you push it too hard. It has 8GB of RAM, which can be virtually expanded by an additional 8GB, and 128GB of storage, which can be expanded with an external micro SD card up to 1TB. Gaming performance is fine as long as you use medium to low graphic settings, otherwise the chipset overclocks, which causes overheating. I've tried some of the most popular games including Asphalt 9 Legends. The graphic settings on high performance cause the phone to heat up a bit, 
but the overall performance and the amount of details are good. There's no lags and it runs smoothly. Even in busy moments like this one, the phone doesn't skip a beat. There's no frame reduction or lag, even with the dynamic rate reduction kicking in every now and then. The frame rate reduction is so slight that it's almost imperceptible. The game might jump from 90 to 60 FPS, but is barely noticeable and doesn't affect the overall fun. Next, Call of Duty Mobile, one of the most popular shooters available on Android. The graphics are also set on medium and I'm trying to fully utilize the 120Hz screen. However, the frame rate is capped at 60 frames per second. The dynamic refresh rate is supposed to smoothly switch between 60 and 120 FPS depending on the content you're viewing. But when I'm playing Call of Duty, the game keeps jumping between 60 and 90 FPS and I never had a chance to experience the full 120 FPS quality. Sometimes I suspect that the advertised 120Hz is just a marketing hype. That said, the dynamic refresh rate is still a great feature for general use. For example, scrolling through menus and watching videos is much smoother with a 120Hz display and the phone does save battery life by switching to a lower refresh rate when you're not gaming or not watching videos. PUBG, the settings are on low and the gameplay is smooth. The amount of details is limited but it doesn't really affect the playability. I'm not a PUBG player but I know it's a demanding game. I was curious to see how the phone would handle it and I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't notice any major frame rate reductions but this is low graphic settings. The Snapdragon with its Adreno GPU does the pretty smooth job here and I'm pleasantly surprised. I was very tempted to try one of my favorite RPGs, Genshin Impact, which is known for being one of the most demanding games on Android platform. I was surprised to find out that it's very playable, even though the frame rate was reduced significantly. We got some barely visible lags every now and then, but overall the game looks really nice. Even the shadows and sun rays are rendered very well, although the image lacks some of the high res details. The phone has a 5000 mAh battery which is basically the gold standard for smartphones these days. I easily got through a full day and a half even with the heavy usage like gaming, watching videos and browsing the web. The phone supports super fast charging at 67 watts which means you can charge it from 0 to 100% in around 40 minutes. That's pretty fast and it's even faster than some more expensive phones thanks to OnePlus own invention, SuperVooch charging technology. In my test, a 30 minutes charge gave me 78% of battery, which is pretty close to the claimed 80% figure. The phone reported full charge after exactly 43 minutes, which is really good. The C3 Lite is a solid lower mid-range phone with a clean design, powerful processor and long-lasting battery life. Its camera system is good enough for most conditions, so you can certainly take it on your holidays and get brilliant photos and videos. Overall, OnePlus Nord C3 Lite is a great phone for the price. It's not the best in its class, but it's definitely worth considering. So if you're looking for the new phone, you can find more information in the video description or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one.